Since its inception in 1856, the Victoria Cross has been awarded just 1,358 times. Its material worth is deliberately negligible. What it represents, priceless. Awarded for outstanding acts of valor, it is the nation's highest honor, earned by those who have gone way beyond duty whilst in the presence of the enemy. Second Lieutenant John Scott Yule from Thornley in County Durham is one of the Victoria Cross 1,358. He represents all from the village who left the pit to fight in the Great War of 1914-1918. The world that John Scott Yule was born into was one of hard work, dominated by coal and the industry surrounding the pit. Families from across the country had migrated to the Durham coal fields in the 19th century, lured by the opportunity of work. So the sinkers came up from Cornwall. They came from all over, because they knew the, when it was a new pit opening, they knew straight away, we are going to have a job and we're going to have a house we won't have money in our pockets. And, and what they did, the management, they put a big ox on a spit down outside the colliery inn. And that was on, and they, they had fray mate, and they had plenty of beer, just so everybody signed up and they got half a crown. And that, that was it, that was your bond. You were stuck with that pit then for, for the next 12 months. You weren't guaranteed a full, full week's wages then, yes, because. The quarries, they used to blow the buzzer and there was a lot of days when they wouldn't be working. Trying to live through that and trying to work through that and raise a family with that and with everything hanging over the heads with regard to injuries, ill health, whatever, and, and trying to feed the family and kids. Hard work, hard work. In the summer of 1914, these men and their families were presented with an opportunity a way to break the cycle of shifts and backbreaking toil. The declaration of war meant that fit, strong men were desperately needed to swell the ranks of Great Britain's small, colonial-sized army. The Royal Navy was the traditional strong arm of government policy. However, the situation in 1914 meant that ground troops were urgently required. And so, Lord Kitchener's citizen army of volunteers was created. This call was answered by the men of Thornley and thousands of others across the country. Patriotism and being seen to do your bit were perhaps not the only considerations. They joined up, they went on there to the army for the fight in World War I because they were, they were guaranteed a wage every week to send home to the wife and family. They got a suit, they, they got a, a, a top coat, they loved the top coats. It was perhaps a change for them to get out and see some green grass and, and trees and, and a trip to France and see all the ladies over there. But these, these fellas were, they, they weren't just a silly miner or a dumb miner. They were hard-working, skillful fellas. And they worked together and everybody looked up for each other. They did, it was fantastic. And the camaraderie was absolutely wonderful, you know. But as I say, uh, Real hard work, but as George says, they were skilled men. I, I always thought that a man that, in hindsight, what we know in hindsight is, is the guy who joined up to go to the trenches and, and whatever, and up there, there, wherever, in mud and so on and stuff. And leave the family and kids at home. A shil what was the shilling a day? That's that they, what they got? they got in the First World War. Uh, the, the, there's got to be something more than just a job. I think. My own view is it's king and country, um, good men, good men. 
patriotic men. At the outbreak of the war, John Yule, known as Jack to family, friends and workmates, was just 17 years old. He'd studied at Thornley Council School, taken technical classes in nearby Wingate, and was working as an electrician at Thornley Colliery with numerous responsibilities. Making sure everything worked for a start. Uh, I was a fitter at Thorny, and, and there was the comparisons fitters and electricians. And it, it, John would have a lot of responsibility um, if there were a problem or there was a problem on the faces or, or whatever. He would be the man responsible for making sure that that worked efficiently. And if he, if he didn't or he couldn't, there was trouble. The electricians, they had a little gear bag in my time, he'll tell you, and they would, their, their overalls was lovely and clean, they, they never got their overalls dirty. <laughs> they were the bees knees at the quarry, you know, where me, I was a blacksmith, I was a shaft man, I was a grey slick, me, you know, filthy, rotten, dirty, up the house of grace all the time, the electricians didn't get dirty, they were the bees knees, weren't they, George? No, <laughs> they thought they were, Bill, but fitters were. Oh, yes, because <laughs> they always used to say, the electrician is a blacksmith with his braids kicked out. <laughs> the camaraderie and the friendly rivalry of those that worked in the County Durham collieries survived down the decades until the last pit was finally closed in 1993. In late 1914, it must have been difficult for John Yule saying goodbye to his friends and workmates who left to join Kitchener's new army. Perhaps these farewells were sweetened by the popular belief that it would all be over by Christmas. As 1914 rolled into 1915, the time came for John to say farewell to his family. He ends up in the Durham Engineers, a territorial force. So he ended, went abroad as a sapper after he'd done his initial training in the UK, he went to the Western Front. Despite his youth, John was quickly identified as a capable leader. Well, he'd seen his potential when he was in the engineers as a potential officer, and he was sent back to do officer training and then posted to the Northumberland Fusiliers, 1st Battalion, and then he was posted with the 11th Battalion in France, and he was mentioned in dispatches in, in the hard fighting of Polygon Wood. He's among it all, right at the front. In late 1917, after he had been promoted from the ranks and fought bravely in France and Belgium, John Scott Yule and his battalion were on the move again. The Italian front was uh, collapsing and they were retreating and they sent the John Scott Yule's 23rd Division, which he was a member of with the Northumberlands, they sent them to stiffen the line out in Italy on the Asiago Plateau. For his outstanding bravery on the 15th of June, Second Lieutenant John Scott Yule from Thornley County, Durham, was awarded the Victoria Cross. Well, he was out on patrol with a group of men and he came under a heavy barrage when the enemy attacked and he ordered his men back and he stayed in the trench to observe the situation. And then he made contact with another unit and found that they were being fired upon by a machine gun from behind, so he had went for the machine gun, attacked it, killed most of the crew, and turned the machine gun on the enemy, inflicting heavy casualties. In September 1918, John returned to England to receive his medal from the King at Buckingham Palace, and then home to Thornley to be applauded by his friends and neighbours. It was in the Hippodrome, the theatre, and they awarded him with a cigarette case and a watch inscribed with the initials GSY. And um, the watch is still in the Northumberland Fusiliers Museum. The local newspapers carried news of the hero's return and of how he had not only been honoured by the King of England with the Victoria Cross, but also by the King of Italy with the Italian Silver Medal for military valour. Addressing the crowd in the Thornley Hippodrome, John's words reflected his unpretentious character. Basically, he said that he was honoured, but he hoped that the people would give the other lads the same welcome home as he's received. He was very modest. 
With the ribbons of the Victoria Cross and the Italian silver medal pinned to his tunic, John Scott Ewell returned to the Italian front in the early autumn of 1918. Unbeknown to him and to those that had celebrated his outstanding achievements, the fighting of the war to end all wars would be over in just a few weeks. When the news finally broke and the guns fell silent, the church bells rang out across County Durham. In Thornley and elsewhere across Europe and beyond, people reflected on what they had lost and on how the fortunate would soon be returning home. One hundred years later, we can only imagine the devastation of the final blow that befell the Yule family on Armistice Day. As the rest of the world sighed with relief, a telegram arrived. The, the telegram was uh, taken at Thornley Post Office on the 11th of November, 18, to inform his family that he'd been killed in action. I was killed on the um, Battle of the Paev. I think it was about 14, 15 days before the war finished. He's only 21 year old. In 1925, the residents of Thornley unveiled a plaque in the Miners' Welfare Hall, honoring all from the village who had lost their lives in the Great War. Ironically, the hall burnt down in 1944 during the 20th century's second global conflict. Ensuring that the fallen of both world wars and of other conflicts should never be forgotten, a magnificent new memorial wall was unveiled in May 1959. The ceremonial event that took place on the 15th of June 2018, 100 years to the day of John Scott Yule's Victoria Cross action, complemented the existing and ongoing work of Thornley residents and of Thornley Parish Council. In 2005 we were approached by some residents, some local residents who were historians and they were interested in researching the war and they approached the Parish Council to um, help them to um, celebrate that uh, the achievements of the VC winner. So um, what we did, the parish council worked with the historians and we uh, gained some funding. And we did an event in 2005, which we placed um, commemorative stone within the war memorial itself to commemorate what John Scott Yule had achieved. Looking back, the pride that the village took in commemorating what he'd done, things like that are really important, the lifetime achievements, and it's, it's really, it's brought Thornley out into the world to recognise us where we have really, some of our residents, in particular John Scott Yule in this case, has achieved something fantastic. 
The village has changed a lot. When I was a child, everything was black, and now everywhere is green. The history is very important to keep looking back and bringing these things out to school children, and that's so that you see how the village was, where it grew out of the mines, and what it's like now. And basically, the parish council would like to move forward and show people, like through the history, where we come from and where we are now. It would have been a pleasure to have met the man, you know. That's all you'd say, he was a hero. His name should live forevermore. Mm -hmm. Simple as that.